Viewer discretion is advised. A child has wandered off into the dense brush of the forest, and a lone conservation officer was dispatched to recover the young boy. Thankfully, the report indicates that he was only missing for around 10 minutes, and therefore, locating the boy would have been simple. It should have been simple. The officer found hints of the child, a shoe here, a toy there, and pretty soon, a sound of a child calling out to him. He ran deeper into the woods, where it soon became unnaturally dark despite the sun still being up. Lost due to his rushing around, he checked his compass, but finds it going haywire and crack, his radio getting only static. After a few seconds, terror sees his body as a horde of blue, phantasmic entities surround him just beyond the trees. In horror, he realized they resemble children, gnashing their teeth at him, cursing and shouting horrible, nightmarish things. He attempted to flee as they proceeded to throw rocks and sharpen sticks at him, all the way until he stumbled out of the denser part of the forest he found himself in. Battered and bloody, he looked back and finally sees the ghostly apparition of the child he was sent to find. Only this time, the boy's face was blank, featureless, just like all the others. Hello everybody, I'm The Rubber. Today, we bring you a SCP Foundation Euclid Class Object SCP-899. SCP-899, also known as Lost Children, is a psychic and telekinetic phenomenon that has a tendency to manifest itself as groups of antagonistic ghostly children. 899 is contained in a dense and deep sectioned off part in the Rocky Mountains. Travelers in the area have reported being pursued and harassed by small shadowy figures that curse and throw rocks to drive them out. The figures tend to be featureless, and it is usually difficult to determine if they possess any gender or even individual voices and behaviors. Failure to leave the area will result in an increase of aggressive behavior culminating in a direct physical attack by the entities. Adults who come into physical contact with the entities will suffer the loss of all detailed memories prior to the onset of puberty. Children who come into contact with the entities will physically disappear, after which some or all of the entities may take on parts of the lost child's appearance. No attempts to communicate or find the whereabouts of a child lost in this way have yet been successful. Furthermore, Foundation staffs are set up in three service cabins, with all the trees around the cabins cut down. It has been noted that the entities can be warded off by iron bullets, which are carried by Foundation staff in the area. An experiment was carried out to test SCP-573's effect against 899. SCP-573 is a flute made of human bones. When played, it places animals and prepubescent children into a highly receptive state and will do whatever the flute user requests. Agent W arrived at the National Park with the bone flute in hand. A researcher, Dr. Waltz, was also brought along to record the findings. Suddenly, a cacophony of childlike screams and swearing is heard in the distance as stones begin to pelt the two. The formless childlike manifestations were closing in on them by the seconds Agent W begins playing 573, and after a few seconds, the melody appeared to have soothed the bloodthirsty manifestations. They became docile, and after a few minutes, faded away as the agent continued to play until they left the area. Dr. Waltz breathed a sigh of relief. That actually worked. What is this thing? The same thing as those children, anomalies out of this world, or perhaps we are the anomalies. Maybe these things have been on Earth longer than we have, and they're just tolerating us. We're tampering in something when we should leave them alone. I think the Foundation is a mistake sometimes. Despite Dr. Waltz's objections, he was forced to accompany Agent W on another round of testing with 573. The testing went ahead as planned and proceeded to have the same effects on 899 as the previous test. However, while the manifestations faded away, a new manifestation, dubbed SCP-899-1, appeared. It was described as an adolescent male, with open wounds and gashes covering his body. It screeched wildly, dropped to all fours, and with great speed pounced on the doctor. It sunk its teeth deep into the doctor's forearm, before moving on and bit into his leg and his neck. Agent W fired his sidearm, 
and managed to ward off the beast-like apparition as it faded away, making a grotesque gurgling sound. Dr. Waltz was hospitalized immediately, and despite the severity of the attack, he only received scars. Fortunately, he was able to maintain his memories from his youth, considering direct attacks from 899 have a tendency to erase such recollections. The Foundation then deemed the use of 573 inappropriate against 899, citing that the effects of 573 would be too harmful and potentially create other anomalies similar to 899-1. Agent W was vehemently against this, but was largely ignored and his pleas were passed over. A few days later, Dr. Waltz was cleared by the doctors and psychologists. Agent W drank in celebrations, alone. That bastard. Perhaps he is made of tougher stuff than I had previously thought. When the outpost heard that Agent W was to be stationed with them, the staffs randomly went on leave. He took another sip at his glass. It's only natural, I guess, after what happened to Waltz. Hell, I'd be running away from me, too. Waltz probably won't be returning to help me either. He made a toast to Dr. Waltz and then walked to the window. There he heard sounds of swearing and cursing and manifestations of 899 in the distance, advancing towards his cabin. Agent W was caught off guard and immediately went for his pistol. What the hell are they doing over here? I'm not even outside. What attracted them? He rushed out and fired a couple of shots into the manifestations causing them to swear and shout vile things at Agent W. After a few more shots, the manifestations retreated. Unfortunately, as they faded, an old foe emerged. Oh, you've got to be kidding me. Agent W reloaded and fired again at 899-1. It only made it angrier. It quickly closed the distance between them, and with great force, it smashed into Agent W, sending him back into the cabin. It then pounced onto him, thrashing him around like a rag doll. Agent W fired desperately at close range, and he was able to fend it off. But another trouble presented itself. The cabin was caught on fire. During the struggle, 899-1 had bit off chunks of Agent W's shoulder and thighs, broken a few of his ribs. He stood up immediately with a scream of pain and began to limp towards the door while trying to reach the foundation on his radio. Immediate assistance needed at Rocky Mountain Outpost. The place is on fire and I'm hurt. They've surrounded me and... Uh, a heavy piece of burning log fell on Agent W. It effectively pinned him on the ground. He was immobilized. The smoke filled up his lungs as he screamed and coughed. Through the door, he could see the children manifesting again, cursing at him. Maybe it was his current predicament. Whatever they were swearing at him sounded like he was being mocked now. You damn demons! When I get out there, I'll... Ugh. The cabin was fully engulfed by the flames. The roar of the raging fire overpowered Agent W's scream. And soon, he was no more. 899 faded back into the darkness, leaving the cabin burning brightly in the dark night. Remember to check out my new animation channel, The Rubber Talks, where I share my life story, thoughts, and opinions. Just click on the link in the description to enter the rubber's world. Before we end this video, we are proud to present these incredibly sweet pieces of fan art. A big thank you to all of you. You can now send us your fan art, and we will be more than happy to show off your best art piece in our next video. Check out our description below on how to submit. I hope you enjoyed today's video. Which SCP do you want to see in the next video and why it is interesting? Let us know in the comment below. We will draw your story and share it with the world. Don't forget to click like, subscribe to the channel, and hit the bell. Please share it to your friends if you like this video. Thank you so much for watching, and we will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.